Thank you for joining us here at the Pentecostals for this week's message. Our desire is to make a difference by loving God, creating community, growing in truth, and serving our world. If God has blessed you through this ministry, we want to encourage you to share it with someone and even consider partnering with us to help POR continue delivering God's Word all around the world. Check out our website, porva.org, to discover more about us and our ministries. Thanks again for joining us, and we hope you enjoyed today's message. Exodus 23 and 20. Are you ready? God spoke and said, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into a place which I have prepared. How many believe God has a special place prepared for his people? Verse 21, beware of him, obey his voice, provoke him not. Who is this he's talking about? An angel. For he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do that, do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. Here it is, verse 23. For mine angels shall go before thee and bring thee unto the Amorites and the Hittites and Perserites and Canaanites and Hivites and all the otherites. And I will cut them off. Now that's some stuff right there. Matthew 18 and 10. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Everything we do we have to build on the word of the Lord, right? Right? Hebrews 13 and 1. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Are we still in the word today? Amen. I, I'm going to wake some of you up and about halfway through, some of you are going to say, wow, I should have been listening because that's some powerful stuff. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your presence that's here. I pray, oh God, that you would manifest yourself today, that you would pour out your spirit today, that you would open blind eyes today, that you would open deaf ears today that cannot hear you. Let the word go forth uninhibited. I take dominion over every spirit of doubt, unbelief, every carnal spirit. I pray we loose the presence of God and the work of your spirit in this place today in Jesus' name. Would you lift your hands and just begin to worship him right now? Let's come to church. Worship him right now. Blessed be the name of the Lord most high. Hallowed be thy name today, Jesus. Let us hear, let us get revelation, understanding in Jesus' name. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. When God stepped out in the middle of nothing, he said, let there be light, and light stood shining on one hand, and darkness disappeared on the other. Angels were present with him and witnessed what happened when God spoke. When God stepped out on space and he sprinkled the night with stars and came into this universe and spoke this world into existence and it began to spin and rotate around the sun, angels saw what happened. When the word of God went forth and when God himself created the mountains and the valleys and the hills and the oceans and the rivers, the deserts and the trees, the angels were there. We could talk about the great animal kingdom and how, what a great imagination God has himself. We can see a little of his personality when we see the creation and all that he has created. And his prized creation when he created you and I. Angels were eyewitnesses to all of that. And for that reason, when an anointed man or woman of God preach the word of God by revelation and truth, I believe that angels are close by. Amen. Because they know something happens when the word of God is spoken and they 
want to be a part of it. Because God has used them in great and mighty ways. We're not going to win our world. We're not going to win the Muslims and the Buddhists and uh, the, the powerless religious people by just saying we have a religion. Or we're a part of some religious body. They have to see something that is real. They have to see, are you with me? They have to see a demonstration of the power of God. Our world is going into a complacent state, into a carnal state. And the church itself must be alive and well to meet the challenges that stand before us. Our God is not a God that used to be. Are you helping me? Our God is not a God of just yesterday, but his word is forever settled in heaven. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want to tell you that God is showing up, and he is going to do some of his best work today and in the days and months and years ahead. (laughs) Our world is hungry for the supernatural. We've spent much time in in three previous sessions or lessons and messages about angels. They're hungry for the supernatural. But I want to tell you there's nothing that will satisfy them like the real deal. The adversary is an imposter. He comes with something that is so imaginary and he's trying to copy and duplicate the original and the real. But people come away hollow and empty and scared. But this word will bring peace. It will bring deliverance. It will bring healing. It will bring transformation in people's lives. (laughs) He's calling for us to get beyond just the Pentecostal traditions. The form of godliness sometimes deny and the power thereof. Our world is looking for the real deal. Real men and women. Real boys and girls that walk with God. That have his anointing. That see and walk in the spirit. Angels aren't coming to preach what I'm preaching to you today. Angels aren't coming to your home to preach the message to your kids. To your neighbors. To your associates to those that are in school or those at the workplace or neighborhood. But a mission is ours. God has given us the responsibility, not just the responsibility, but the assets to carry out his work and to do. And greater things, he said, shall you and I do. What a great God, but yet what a tremendous responsibility. I don't want to lack in what God has told me I can do and what he's told me he will do through you and I. I believe that some of you are going to be used in ways that will blow your mind today. You look at yourself, I look at myself and we say we're so incapable of doing this or that or something else. But I want to tell you when God shows up, when he sends his angelic forces, there is nothing that he cannot do. It will blow your mind what he has in store for you. If you will hear the word and receive his promises. Hebrews 11 and 5 by faith. Enoch, are you hearing me? By what? By faith. Enoch was translated that he should not see death. I don't know about the future. I don't know all how it's going to work. But I want to tell you, God is not a boring God. His ways are as high above ours as heaven is the earth. He has a plan that is incredible. He has a plan for you. He has a plan. Our world's not going to hell in a handbasket because their church is alive. <laughs> This is our day. No matter how dark it gets, are you listening? The brighter the, the, the light of the Spirit of the Lord shines. He was not found, verse 11, verse 7, I'm sorry. He was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. I'm sorry, verse 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him today. I want to diligently seek you, Lord, because I want you to reward me with your power, with your anointing, with your favor. Verse 7, by faith, Noah. By what? By faith. By faith, the just shall live. By what? 
by faith. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of the things not yet as seen, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of this house. How are you going to do it, God? <clears throat> I don't pretend to know all the methods, but I know that he's going to show up because he loves them just as much as he loves you and I. And he's going to give us the methods. He's going to give us the anointing. He's going to make a way. He prepared an ark. Are you crazy, Noah? No, I'm just obeying the Lord. Now, what in the world? We've never seen anything like this. I know our world has never seen anything like an apostolic church. Amen. Anointed church. Anointed people that are about to do what he has called us to do. Amen. We're going to be mightily used of God. Somebody say, that's me. I claim it by faith. Would you lift your hands? I claim it by faith. If you can't even raise your hand, it's not going to happen to you. But I'm going to say, the just shall live by faith. But I am going to mightily be, oh, I claim it today. Be used by God. He's going to use somebody. I don't want him to go down the road, down somewhere else and say, hey, there's a willing vessel. Because we're stuck in the mud. We're all in our formalism. But I want to be mightily used of God. How about you? God's not looking for perfect people. Well, when I get this done, if I can just get this done, if I can just get this done, then everything's going to be fine, and Jesus can use me then. No, he's not waiting for all that stuff. He just wants you to get up today and do what you're supposed to do. Amen. Serve him with all of your heart. Allow him. Let faith, let faith arise. If you want to be used miraculously, it's about making ourselves available. Make, making ourselves available. It's something about uh, in the corporate world. And the pastor was blessed for about 17 years owning our own company and, 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 and knowing people and taking hundreds of applications and, and, and just working around people. But it was amazing to me. There were some people that I'm going to tell you, it, they got up with, with working on their mind. I didn't have to worry if they were going to be there. I didn't have to worry if they are going to be late. I didn't have to worry about this and them taking all kind of sick days and wondering if they really, this and that and something else. They just made up their mind, I'm here, sir, and I'm going to make a living for my family. I'm going to enjoy my journey. And they did it with all their heart. Sometimes it comes in the church the same way, but I don't want the devil to have to say, hey, I wonder if their heart's really in it. No, we get up in time to be at work. We get up in time to be a church. I want to be in the prayer room. I want to build a fire. I want to prepare this house because I know the angels of the Lord are going to be there. I know the presence of God is going to be there. Why? Because I prayed it down. Availability. Would you lift your hands and say, God, I want to be available to you. Of all people, I want to be available. I want to be available to you. There is absolutely nothing, we sang it earlier, that God cannot do. There is no disease, there's nothing in the book, there's no prescribed a, a problem by a doctor or a medical person that God cannot do whatever it needs to be done. I believe that we're going to see the things that have been impossible with man, God's going to do them. Amen. He's the answer. He's the answer. I feel his presence. I feel his power. Now, you can walk in a place and tell when somebody's prejudiced against you. You can walk in a place and see where hatred, anger, all that stuff is. You can feel that stuff. But you can also feel when you feel at home. You feel relaxed. You feel like, wow, it feels good in here. I feel good. That's what we want people to feel when they come into the house of God, that we welcome them, that when we talk to people, that we welcome them to be a part of the family of God. There's nothing that feels like the presence of God. There's nothing like bathing in his presence. Amen. That's where joy is. Amen. You would ask the question today because we're talking about angels and we're revisiting it again. And we've talked about it in different ways, but let me come at it another way today. Do you, do you believe that everybody has an angel pastor? Maybe that's a question that some of us have, right? I've already answered that question, so you don't have any questions. <laughs> there are angels of God, and then there are fallen angels. We understand that, right? Psalm 34 and 7, and David said, The angel of the Lord encampeth around about 
them that fear him, not just encamp about them, but delivereth them. That's a promise of God, listen carefully, to Christians, to born again of the water and the spirit, people that carry his name. He said to those, to the children of God, I have give you a promise. The angel of the Lord encamps about them that fear him and deliver them. And then the church should be excited and we should clap our hands and thank God for that. But it's not for sinners. It's not just something that's just a carte blanche. It's not just something that, that, that everybody has that benefit. It's not true. In the New Testament, in Hebrews, it says of angels, of ministering spirits to the would-be heirs of salvation. Who is that? Somebody said, that's me. Amen. This is to the people of God, not to sinners. People of the world have forces of darkness. There are angels that people entertain. There are people that call down what they so-called call down uh, the spirits of a loved one. Uh, they uh, represent themselves and say that, that this happened and that happened and many different things happened. But I just got to tell you, people of the world have forces of darkness around them and sometimes they become afflicted. Sometimes they become possessed. Sometimes they become tormented by those forces of darkness, by those fallen angels. We have to know his voice. The Bible says, in a stranger, we will not follow. But it takes deliverance. Some people are scared of the word deliverance. They're frightened of the word deliverance. But I want to tell you, the greatest thing that can happen to a person that is afflicted or controlled or, or dominated by a demon spirit if for somebody that has the power of God that's greater than that dark spirit to bind that spirit and cast it from them. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it takes deliverance in the name. There's no other name. The name of Jesus to release them. You and I have been given the power and the authority to command dark spirits, demon spirits, to flee from our homes. To flee from people that are bound and chained and have no way to escape but the name that's above every name. So the more we think about it, the more we begin to understand what it is and who it is that is alive inside of us. That dormant spirit of God that's inside of us. And if we're not careful, we forget about its value. We forget about who we are. We have been endued with power from on high. The spirit of the living God has come to live inside of us. When you were born of the water and of the spirit, there is something that transformed inside of you. That old carnal flesh, that old empty man, that old filthy mind, that old cursing tongue, all of those things diminish and be driven from you. But when you're endued with his power, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you have the authority to bind. You have the authority to lose. You have the authority to pray. You have authority to curse the spirits of darkness. Oh, hallelujah. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Rema Tohosha. So I do believe that the children of God have their own angel. I do believe that. That's why Jesus said concerning those children that I read just a jiffy ago, he said their angels, he personalized them. <clears throat> he didn't say the angels. He said their angels. Amen. Matthew 18 and 10. Beware that you don't look down upon a single one of these little children. For I tell you that in heaven their angels have constant access to my Father. Can it be any plainer than that? One of our ministers was telling some time ago that he was called to go pray for someone in the hospital that was dying. And he said, so I went and prayed for this man. And he said, I had another appointment after praying for him that I had already committed to, so I needed to go on. He said, and so I, 
I had not heard back from him, and, and it had been a couple of weeks, and he said, I ran into him uh, downtown or someplace where they were shopping, and he said the man was walking down the street, and that was surprising because obviously he had been healed because he was very, very, very ill before. And he said he walked and, 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 and seen that this man was healed. And the man was running up to him, praising God and talking about how good God had been. And, and then he was thanking him for praying for him. He said, I'm going to tell you one other thing that was really important to me. And in that critical condition I was in, I want to thank you for staying the night with me. And every time I'd look over and I'd see you there, and it was comforting to know that you were there all night with me. The preacher said, I, I wasn't there all night. I, I love you and I was praying for you, but I, but I wasn't there. Who was there? Who was there? I propose to you that it wasn't hallucinations. I propose to you that it wasn't the preacher because the preacher knew where he was. But is it possible it was his angel? Come on, church. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you go into the book of Acts, it'll help you understand that. When Peter was in prison, Acts chapter 12, Peter was arrested and he was put in the strongest prison and guarded by four squads of four soldiers and he was bound and chained and if he escaped, the guards were going to pay with their own lives. But across town, there was a church that was praying, praying, oh, the power of prayer, oh, the power of prayer, Acts 1, 12 and 6. The night before Herod went to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries stood, stood guard against the entrance and suddenly an angel, what? An angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in his cell. He struck Peter on the side, woke him up, quick get up, he said, and the chains fell off of Peter's wrist. Then the angel, the angel, somebody say the angel, said unto him, put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so, wrap your cloak around and follow me. The angel told him, Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea what the angel was doing was really, what was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself and they went through it. And when they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Peter came to himself. Because this was mind-blowing. This was overwhelming. I mean, I was once lost, but now I'm found. I was once bound, but now I'm free. <clears throat> Verse 11, Peter came to himself, said, Now I know without a doubt the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. Amen. 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 Verse 13, Peter knocked at the outer entrance and a servant, ser, servant named Rhoda came to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed, she ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter's at the door, Peter's at the door. You're out of your mind, are you crazy, girl? When she kept insisting that it was so, they said it must be his angel. How's that? Amen. Peter's knocking at the door. They were scorning her, sort of. But she insisted, no, he's at the door. Now, we've never been taught this stuff to speak of, that your angel looks like you, and I, I'm just going to leave the word out there. I'm not going to do, do a lot of... Uh, 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 dissecting that. I think the word is pretty strong here. But I do know this, that God is our deliverer. He is the ever-present help in the time of trouble. He's a way maker. He'll make a way where there is no way. We know his name, the name that's above every name, the name that every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. His name is Jesus. At the mention of his name, demons tremble. James 2, 19. 
Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also know that, and they tremble. Four and seven, James, submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil. I'm talking about the fallen ones. The ones that try to manipulate you, to try to uh, seduce you, try to, uh, to trap you, try to destroy your soul. The Bible says, and he will flee from you. Luke 10, 17, the 72, 72 return with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Turn to somebody and say, you don't have to take the stuff you've been taking. Mark 3 and 11, whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him, cried out, you are the son of God. Jude 1 and 6, and the angels who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, he has kept them in eternal chains under gloomy, under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day. Amen. Amen. Oh, there is something about our God that will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Amen. Luke 4, 41, and demons also came out of many crying, you are the son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because they knew not that he was Christ. 1 Peter 5 and 8, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to desire. Luke 11 and 14, now he was casting out a demon that was mute. And when the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the people marveled. I could talk to you a long time, a long time about the delivering power of God and how God has power over every situation and he can meet every need and he is faithful to his promises. That's the God that I serve. Amen. First John 4 and 1, he said, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. I want to preach to you the pure word of God today. Not something watered down. Something that, that has become a political correct message. and Something that, that, that we are uh, uh, afraid to just say it like it is. Because the word stands no matter what generation it is. The air trembles when you shout his name. Demons tremble when you shout his name. If I could get you today, if I prayed for revelation, that you could see beyond all the circumstances and see what's driving many circumstances in your life. Begin to understand that he that is in you is greater than he that's in you than he that is in the world. That we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. The God that is in you gave you authority to where you don't have to be tormented, where you can sleep of a night, where you can rest in the Lord, where you can do his work and the doctors say no they say no because that's the end of their abilities when they prescribe this and it doesn't work and they tell you to go here and do this it does, it's not the end it's not the end because God is still in control I'm glad I have the book I'm glad I have the word Amen. Heaven and earth could pass away, but his word will stand. That's what I'm preaching to you today. Amen. What's his name? His name is Jesus. Every miracle begins with the, an impossibility to man. That's what a miracle is. When it's impossible to man, God shows up and he makes it happen when nobody else could make it happen. I want the miraculous I don't want the lukewarm. I don't want the leftovers. I don't want a, a form of godliness denying the power thereof. I want the real thing. I want high doses of his power. I want to see manifestations of his glory. Every miracle begins with an impossibility to man. I want the gifts of the Spirit to operate. I'm not afraid of the gift of the Spirit. I want the gifts of the Spirit to operate. I want God to use you and I in uncommon ways. I want there to be released, released the gift of faith, the gift of healing, not just in the pulpit, not just in the ministry, but I want you to be empowered and you, because you've been endued with power from on high. I want you to release your faith and let God use you in mighty ways. The more you understand who you are, you begin to say, what have I done for the past five years, the past 10 years? Why? 
Why have I kept this locked up inside? Why have I listened to the enemy that tried to tell me this and tried to tell me that you don't have to have credentials to preach? You don't have to have credentials to teach a Bible study. You don't have to have credentials, amen, because he credentialized you when he filled you with his spirit. He gave you that authority to pray for somebody that needs deliverance. The results will be undeniable. We can't win them by just the pat on the back and some uh, uh, psychological conversation and trying to manipulate people in this. No, they need to see the real thing. Are you and I the real deal? Or do they go and look for something that they have not found yet? Let it be said when they walk into the parking lot or they drive by and see that cross of this building that there's chills that flows all through them. Let it be said that so many angels are dispatched here that every car that comes by, every person that drives in the parking lot, every person that walks into the foyer or walks in one of our classrooms or walks in our Spanish service or walks into the main sanctuary, that they feel the power of God and that demon spirit that's been tormenting them and driving them is stripped from them. Amen. Be careful who you criticize because this is going to be a radical day. I'm not talking about the lukewarmers. I'm not talking about those that, are, that have, have self-appointed policemen. That, but, but, but it's people that pray. It's people that fast. It's people that are walking with spiritual authority. Be careful who you criticize because it may be God himself you end up fighting God because God is going to do some things to shake some people that are asleep. He's going to do some things to shake us because we've got to be ready to do his work. Amen. If you don't want the mighty works of God and the mighty manifestations of God, he'll just go right on down the road and look for a yielded vessel, a vessel that he can use. Jesus will let you do your own thing, but you'll do it by yourself. He's trying to get a hold of us so that he can flow through us and do what he wants to do. Make no doubt about it. He has a master plan. He knows where America is right today. He knows what the next year holds. He knows what's happening in Afghanistan. He knows what's happening in Iran. He knows what's happening all over the world. He has his pulse on it. But his will will be done. Yes. I believe it's the will of God that angels come to every service, that they're here. I believe it's the will of God that there's there's an army of saints that pray away all of the hindering spirits even before people get here. Those that were coming that have a flat tire or this happens or they have a fight in the car or, or there's something happens at the house and there's discouragement, there's something sent, but there's something about, amen, be, even before service begins that there are people that are clearing the air because you have the power to do that and you're binding any, any deterrence, anything that would stop conviction and the power of God flowing. Right. Amen. How do angels operate? How do they... How do, they, how do they do when they come to church? I don't know for sure all of that. I, I think they probably are kind of like in a military formation. Probably. Everything about him is done in decency and order. I heard a prophet of the Lord say one time, it may have been T.W. Barnes, I'm not sure who it was. He said when he, he, he preached salvation and prayed for people to get the Holy Ghost, He said that was the only time that he saw angels stand back because they didn't seem to know what to do. The Bible says, it is written, they desire to look into this because you are a special people, because you've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. They don't know anything about that. 1 Peter 1 and 12, uh, under whom it was revealed that not only unto themselves but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you and with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Amen. Amen. 
something the angels look into. When somebody is baptized in the name of Jesus and all of those sins they, they've repented of and they've been baptized and all of a lifetime of dirty, filthy sins and all of the things that have happened, they look at this and say, by baptism, by obedience to the word of God, those sins, watch them. They're washed in the sea of forgetfulness. They're watching their presence is here. They can draw men and women by conviction and convict them of their sins. But when a person gets here and they're worshiping God, and somebody says, God wants to fill you with his spirit. Tell me what that is. Just begin to worship him, praise him, and allow him to take over. Yield your tongue to him because that's the most unruly member of your body. When you yield that, he, God said, I will fill them with my spirit. And they're looking with amazement as the spirit of the Lord comes in them. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, this doesn't get us. I don't know what will. Amen. Maybe you've seen in a service a person that just, they didn't, they weren't involved at all. There's people shouting around them. There's stuff going on. There are people in the altar and here, there. But all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they just begin to weep. <laughs> weep and weep and weep. Well, that's not another person. They've done nothing, but all of a sudden, whoa! What happened? I believe an angel of the Lord come up and touch them. I believe an angel of the Lord come and bump them. Get out of that, amen. Get out of that stuff. Get into this thing. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 1 and 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? They are ministering spirits to the would-be heirs of salvation. Amen. Amen. Let's give room for God to work. Let's get our head out of the dirt, out of the circumstances, out of the dust, out of the things that just bog us down. And we allow the enemy to, to just encapsulate us, to, to completely surround us, to to, to really just seduce our mind with, with overwhelming things and get our eyes back on the Lord, the one that owns the universe, that created everything, that in a moment's time, he can change all circumstances. Amen. 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 Angels come to church. Yes, they do. Sometimes they come to our homes. Sometimes they come to our cars. We could talk about the many things that we believe. We've seen the Lord intervene. I'm not always sure why they come. Maybe somebody had a burden for me and they're praying for me. They could be in the other end of the world, but they're praying for me and that's prompted an angelic host to gather around me. Maybe it's a prayer that I prayed, but God doesn't forget our prayers. He doesn't forget our tears. And that, that prayed some time ago, but now it's that season. It's that time to bring it into flourishing. And here they are. I have no idea why they're there, but they're here to bring it to pass. Amen. So we've got his power. Power to cast out the devil. To lay hands on the sick. They will recover we begin to speak his word, not our words, because they recognize his word. God recognizes his word. The devils recognize God's word. We need to begin to speak more of his word, begin to pray his word more, because that's what gets the job done. Amen. When you enter and come, and I'm closing now, into this building, you're entering to the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You've heard me say it before, but, but in special times of, of dignitaries visiting, whether it's a White House or uh, all across the world, wherever that main place is, but they have the red carpet and here comes the royalty, here comes the most important people, and, and they come with all their pomp and glory. They come with their caravans of people and, and, and all of their security, and, and, and here they come. <laughs> Get everybody ready, because here they are. When you walk into this holy place, the King of Kings is here. It's all prepared. I believe he has the table set out. We should walk with anticipation. Woo! We get to go to the house of the Lord today. I'm going to be fed at the master's table. Amen. The 
friend of mine was sharing that he was preaching and preaching. There was one man that was completely overwhelmed with weeping, weeping, weeping. So at the end of the service, he said, I've just got to get to this man because I want to, I want to see what, what it is, what's wrong with him, what's happened. He said, he began to describe him. He said, preacher, every time you walked away from the pulpit and you got close to the wall, because he was a walker, he said, when you got close to the wall, there were claws that reached out to devour you. At the moment, you would turn and walk back to, toward that pulpit, the claws would return back to the wall. He was having a vision of the spirit world. He said it was fearful, so I noticed that when they reached out, I noticed that they had chains around them, that they could only reach out so far. What are you preaching, Pastor? I'm preaching to you that the devil has limits on him. The Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper when you come in the name of Jesus. Now you can make yourself accept accessible to that demonic world if you want to, but I want to walk in his covering. I want to walk in his power. I want to walk in his security. By the name of Jesus and the power of his name, you and I are safe and secure. Amen. 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 I can't wait to see. I believe our greatest days are not behind us. I love, I love to read about our history. I keep pictures and books around. I love to see. If you've been in my office, you see my grandfather's Bible, 100 years or so old, it wore out. You see my daddy's Bibles wore out. I've got three of them, probably maybe four of them. And then some of my old Bibles, I keep them around. I read the old articles. And I want to tell you, though, those were incredible days. Those were phenomenal days. But I will tell you, that, and we've had some incredible 30-some years, that if I could tell you all the things that's happened, all the miracles, it would blow your mind. But it's nothing compared to what I believe we're going to see in our lifetime. That is just ahead. A preacher that I know... Well, I was preaching for for the James Kilgore, Houston, Texas, one of our great leaders that's gone on to be with the Lord now. He said someone took a picture, and I've seen one of these pictures in, in times past, a picture of the congregation because it was a great night. It was almost like a crusade, just a tremendous, tremendous service, a lot of people. He said as they, uh, someone showed him the picture afterwards, and it showed that over top of every person that had their hands raised, there was a flame of fire that was above each one of them. I don't know how the Lord is going to manifest himself today or in the future, but I can't wait to see what he is going to do with us, through us, and for us. Amen. October the 6th. I think it was 2008. It could be 2009. There was a large helicopter shot down in Afghanistan. The man's name was Carl. He was about 32 years old. I, I talked to his pastor some time back. His pastor got a word from the Lord for him because he was about to leave for Afghanistan. The only word he got, it was a really a short word. The pastor said, there's a darkness coming to your life, a darkness coming to your life. He said, I can't see what it is, but there's a blackness. He said, but there's going to be an angel of the Lord who will come and bring you to his bosom. That's all he had. The brother now was in Afghanistan. He was on a helicopter, seated right behind the pilot. He said, we've been fighting for a couple of hours. He said, we were just blowing up all kinds of explosive installations there. He said, a missile came right by my head, just missed me by inches. I sensed it as I felt it as it went by. He said, we were down in between the cliffs flying in this helicopter, and he said, somehow we struck a cliff. He said, it was foggy. Visibility was low. It was dark. He said, we dropped about five, 600 feet, and we crashed into a series of buildings at a pretty good rate of speed. He said a third of the helicopter caught on fire. 
He said, when that helicopter crashed hard into the earth, he said, my body should have been plowed into the ground, shooting forward. He should have been instantly killed. But he said, an angel of God came up behind me and instantly wrapped his arms around me, wings around me, and sucked me to the back, all the way to the back of that helicopter. He said, every person on board around me was killed. Not only were they killed, he said it took three hours to dig their bodies out of the soil and the dirt. But he said, I was sucked back to the very back of that helicopter. Amen. Amen. And he said, when I, I got myself out, I was able to get myself out. When I got out, he said, there was a path cleared that I could walk out of that place. Amen. Well, I believe we're going to see things that we've never seen before. We're going to have visitations that we've never had before because we're going to become heavenly minded, not just earthly minded, but heavenly minded. Would you stand? We're going to hear the voice of God in the nighttime, not just foolish stuff, not just carnal stuff. We're going to fill our minds with God things. Amen. On behalf of Pastor Joe Forbush and the Pentecostals of Richmond, thanks again for spending time with us today. God bless you.